Ah, the catharsis of time-lapse photography. Welcome to the first piano book. And for those of you who don't know what it's all about, there's a prologue video above and below, but I'll also do a bit of a summary at the end of this film. But for now, I thought I'd just jump in and show you how I'd go about basically sampling a piano in two minutes, 10 seconds. Basically, I'm using my Schimmel C114 Modern Junior, which is like, it's like a training piano. It sounds kind of okay, uh, but sounds amazing with the felt down, which is why we made the Spitfire felt piano using this piano. I've got a pair of M149s Neumann, which are, they're incredibly unforgiving, but also unforgivingly expensive as well. They're going into a Neve 1073 DPA, which is in turn going into a Symphony Apogee. So it's a, it's a lovely signal path. Going into Logic, I've set up a kind of remarkable click track that basically, as we go up the keyboard, it gets quicker and quicker. Basically, as the strings get shorter, they don't resonate for as long. So for this experiment, I wanted to create a winter piano with my Schimmel. I love the sound of felt pianos, and I've linked below a selection of commercially available ones and one free one that Spitfire Audio does. But the problem with felt pianos is they have difficulty really cutting through denser tracks. So with this experiment, I want to create a very mellow, personal sounding piano that doesn't have the kind of muffled quality of a felt piano. In so doing, all I'm going to record is not the very quietest layer, but I would say uh, next to the quietest possible layer. I'm going to use just pedal down samples because I think we all prefer a piano with the pedal down anyway and uh, I'm, you'll hear me lift the pedal uh, I always find it extraordinary that I think about two-thirds of the length of a sample for a piano uh, you probably never hear because you never hold notes down for that long but it also kind of adds to the fun of using these samples is when they kind of lift naturally with that natural kind of pedal lift sound so I'm just going up cycle of fifths from this C down here I don't know my cycle of fifths. Okay, so here we go. I have to be really careful of this stool because it's really creaky. Okay, let that, that settle there. Pedal down. Right, that's that done. Okay, so over to the computer. So the first thing I do is go into the entire file and normalize that. I don't normalize each sample because you get difference in noise floor. So just bring the whole thing up, mainly for ease of editing. And then because we played it to a grid, all you do is you get your scissors, hit Alt in Logic, and then hey presto, they're all cut quite crudely. And then the boring job of titling, and so just go into each one and you just name the note number. Be sure you don't use the flat signs, always use the sharp signs. Well, certainly with the EXS, it doesn't recognize the lowercase b's as flats, that just recognize them as b's. Now, the most important thing here is not to hard edit. So I'm just gonna take these back so that we're not kind of re-triggering notes and then just give it a bit of pre-roll. That's crucial for later on, as you'll see. And then it's just a matter of exporting those, pulling up an EXS, importing, and EXS has one of those clever auto map functions according to those note names that you have meticulously put in. Okay, when it auto maps, it spreads the notes both up and down from the root and I don't like uh, the sounds of samples when they're kind of pitched up. So I basically change that and just make sure that they just all start on the root and then pitch down to the neighboring zone. There we go. Why is that? Why do samples sound rubbish if they're pitched up but not if they're pitched down. Is it 
like the human voice, when you pitch it up, it sounds like comedic and Tom and Jerry-ish, but when you pitch it down, it sounds kind of cool and Darth Vader-ish. Does that apply to all of nature's sonic palette? I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And then we just need to pull up the sample starts, because if you recall, we introduced a pre-roll, and I'm just gonna pick a random note, gonna pull that across there, I'm going to note that start time and copy it across all the regions. Okay, always the moment of truth. I don't know, I'm ne I'll never get bored of making samples in this point where you go, is it going to be magical? Okay, not to worry, I was always gonna go in, individually edit each sample, so it's kind of not hitting the DC offset, I think it's called, which causes the clicks. So we just need to go through and do all of those. I've also got a problematic note, which I'd usually re-record, it's just too quiet, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna get rid of it and stretch the neighboring zone down. Interesting. Okay, put a bit of splosh on for a true representation of how this beast is going to work. So I'm really pleased with that as an experiment. I think it needs to be noise reduced and that's something that I'll investigate in a forthcoming piano book film. Now the point of piano book is it's a sample library with a difference. I'm gonna sample a bunch of pianos and maybe the community can sample some too and we'll work out in future episodes how people who contribute to the project, uh, what rewards they get when we finish it, maybe in about a year's time. So the point of this video today is to one, to encourage you to go out there and make your own samples. It took me two minutes, 10 seconds to record the piano, and I would say a total of about 15 minutes start to end from me hitting that low C to actually playing the thing on the piano in that last clip that you saw. Because you are a composer, you can work out the sound that you want, the application that you require it for, and just kind of guide yourself sonically through the sampling process with that in mind. So over the next few weeks, I'm gonna determine a kind of, I think, a, a way in which I think that we should make these pianos. So the end result is not too chunky, but the result sonically is pleasing and has a kind of multitude of applications. Experiments with different mics, experiments with recording pianos in noisy places, recording pianos with your iPhone. So we'll establish a kind of a method of sampling these things and then talk about how we can work together to create this library. So news, the website is kind of up and running. Uh, the websites are never finished, but it's up and running. I've reduced my own kind of expectations of running things like a, a piano book Instagram and a SoundCloud for now because what was happening is the sheer scale of the website was actually blocking progress, blocking me doing this very first episode. So go to pianobook.co.uk. You'll be able to get a download of this experiment, this two minute, 10 second piano from there, along with other you know, piano experiments that I've been doing. We've got an amazing new logo, a guy called Mihail, excuse me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I've linked to his website below and also in the news section of the Piano Book website, there's some information on Mihail and I hope you agree that it's a it's a really cool logo very appropriate for what we're trying to do thanks as always for watching i've got a whole list of stuff that i'm going to do for piano book coming up and i'm really excited about it um if you want to see these films subscribe if you haven't done already and if you want to be notified when i put a film up just ding that bell if you've liked this video one of those would be lovely see you next time